Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF and on today's episode we're going to be covering the most recent Somerton release and this is a Oxford rye from the Oxford Artistan Distillery. Now if you've noticed a little bit about my kind of time frames when I do my videos you'll notice that I cover Somerton Club releases every uh, every two months when they come out and it tends to be we tend to get the bottles around about the 20th to the 24th of each month and I tend to cover them either like late that month or early the next month so this bottle actually came to us in December it was the the kind of Christmas dram if you like for uh, December 2022 you might have seen it on my whiskey in for that month and you can see I've got quite a good bit of it left but it's taken me a little while to get to this one um, that's really twofold one is because the they haven't released this yet you know so this is one that came to Somerton Club and the intention was on the literature that came with the bottle that this was going to be released early this year so I pushed it back a little bit to see if um, you know they would release it because I like to cover whiskies that you guys can get hold of as a, as a, a kind of general rule it doesn't always work like that and I know worldwide we struggle but um, you know I was hoping that they would release this before I'd made the video but really that's just a kind of dumb excuse because I didn't really get on with this bottle it's the truth of it just the truth of it so I'll get into a little bit more behind the scenes on that as I get towards the end of the, the video but as you may well know you might not know this it depends on how long you followed me for but one of the things I like to do on this channel is try to remove my own personal feelings about a whiskey as much as I can and come at it from a really subjective point of view. So my review today is going to be in two parts almost. I'm going to do my what I would call my normal review, which is I'll give you the facts and figures about the bottle, I'll give you some tasting notes that I've pulled out about this thing, um, and then I'll give you my personal feelings at the end, and you can call, kind of mile between the two what you think about it. But yeah, let's get into it and see what we've actually got. Um, quick overview on Somerton in case you don't know, I like to talk about these guys a lot. I'm a fully paid member of Somerton Club and every two months they take 50 quid of my hard earned and at the end of that month they send us a mystery bottle to all the members, same time, same you know, same bottle, all that stuff. Um, you never know what you're going to get. I know the uh, I know the guy who runs it, Dan, quite well now and um, I've never asked him what the bottles have come in but even if I did, I don't think he would tell me. He's excellent at keeping his little secret. But um, I've been a member of these guys for years now, so uh, you, you know, it's good value stuff. And if you're in the UK, then it's well worth checking out if you're a whiskey fan. Good community, good Discord, all stuff that we love. Onto the bottle then, we've got the Oxford Rye. And this is the special release from Somerton, I guess, but Heritage Grains appears on all of their bottles. This is the 2017 Harvest. It doesn't really have any more information. There was like... On their major releases, they have like a bar that's in between here and here that has like, you know, Easy Rider was their most recent one from the Batch 7. This is a 50% whiskey, and this cost me 50 quid. Um, I don't know how much this would cost if it was a normal retail release, but looking at their website, the kind of the cheapest one they've got available right now for a full size bottle is 55 quid, which I imagine uh, has some shipping as well. Uh, maybe not though, maybe they've got a deal for, you know, over 50 quid or something, but. So worst case scenario, I've saved probably a fiver, which is kind of where the Somerton sits. You know, occasionally they get a really good deal, but um, most of the time you 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 kind of making a a small saving, but getting an interesting bottle that you might not ordinarily have picked. So this one then is a very interesting makeup. Now, as I said at the beginning, I don't typically get on with rye, but I try to come at uh, every bottle with a really open mind and not write it off, and try and do like I said that critical analysis that um, I've hopefully been cultivating over these years. Um, and that's what I'll try and give you today. So uh, interesting mash bill, this is 10% um, malted barley and 90% maslin, which is something that was new to me, never heard of that before. But um, thankfully, Somerton Club sent over a good bit of literature about this as well. But basically what that means is that the fields where this, this, um, this crop was grown contained rye and wheat together, rather than just being a single crop. So the actual kind of mash bill as a rough estimate, ended up being something like 70% rye, 20% wheat, and 10% malted barley. Now they didn't just stop there, they've gone through a, a kind of really interesting aging process as well. So the cast types, so many different cast types. Um, it's 60% American oak, and that includes a mixture of new and STR, that shaved toasted rechard that I'm a quite a big fan of to be fair. 60% has been those two things there. And then after that, Another 40% was fortified wines. That's three kinds of sherry. That's uh, Manzanilla, Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez. And that also includes some Madeira um, fortified wine and some port as well. So lots, lots going on. 
Um, maybe maybe too much, but you know that'll be in the tasting. Um, don't know much about added color, non-chill filtration, anything like that. That doesn't it's not it doesn't appear on the bottle. So um, I'm I'm assuming in this one. I don't often try to assume, but I'm assuming not. But um, unless it's on the bottle, I try not to say one way or the other. Um, but yeah. So let's get onto the actual tasting and see what we've got in the glass, shall we? Looking pretty good no matter what, but um, yeah, it's got this kind of really deep coppery colour. Let's get onto the nose and see what we've got. Now for me, um, I have to say actually I quite like the nose. It's got a kind of like, it's like sour cherries, cola bottles, obviously rye bread. I mean, I do say rye bread a lot when I'm dealing with rye, but it... You know, you'll know if you've ever tried one of those kind of. We got like rovitas. I don't know what it might be called around the world, but rovita it really does smell like that, that kind of rye bread. And there's some dark chocolate in there as well, and that might be another thing because I'm not really a big fan of dark chocolate. Let's try on the palate. Mhm. Mm I mean, it's um, it's got a really, a really big bold in your face flavour. Hot and spicy, as I kind of normally say with rye as well. Now for me, it's initially herbal, so we're talking like aniseed and some, a bit of like kind of tea, you know, tea leaves, that kind of thing. More of those sour, sour, sour cherries coming through, and then it's like a bitter coffee on the back end. Um, I'm a I'm a coffee drinker, and I don't add sugar to it or anything like that. But yeah, um, the sort of milk helps. But you can get kind of it's almost as if you've made a fresh pot of coffee but put your uh, boiling water straight onto the coffee grinds instead of waiting for it to cool down a little bit or mixing it with some milk or something like that so you've kind of got that kind of baked coffee kind of vibe from this it, this is kind of what i'm picking up and then it kind of morphs into those chili flakes that kind of spiciness coming through so sometimes i think of things like cinnamon but this is definitely on that chili flakes side of thing the finish then is really long herbal and spicy is the one thing i'll say so i'll have another another sip of this And that, based on all of this, with my um, with my subjective critical hat on, what I can tell you is this is a quality liquid. It's it's been made well. It's 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 well rounded for a rye. I wouldn't call it. It's not definitely not easy drinking. Not for me. But it's um, it's it's quite bold and in in your face. And there's some rough edges on the outside. But other than that, it seems to well put together. The cask choices, if I hadn't have known those, I don't think I'd have had much chance of guessing any of the, the fortified wines, to be honest. Um, I don't really get much of the, the, the PX, especially, the Madeira, especially, the Port. None of that sweetness is coming through for me at all. It's all kind of bitter and uh, and sour notes. And that, I should say as well, as I always say with those notes, that's not a negative. That's just, just a, a flavour profile. Now, personal feelings. Um, I, I've been long-standing not a fan of rye. Um, when I started the channel, even I was not a fan of peat, but I've managed to um, break through that and actually become a, a massive purveyor of peat. I really love peat now. Like it, it probably is my, one of my go-to flavors. Rye, I've been really, really struggling to break through that ever since I've tried my first rye. Now, I've tried some bottles of whiskey with the word rye on them that I've quite enjoyed. That might have been a reduced rye content. I mean, this one's not exactly high. It's like 70%, which isn't like too high. I've tried higher ryes. I've tried lower ryes. But there have been ryes that I've, in, that I've found okay. I was going to say enjoyed, but definitely found okay. Um... And that's what I'm keen to say about this one. I don't hate it, I just don't like it. That's my own personal feelings. That said, I've read, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the Summerton Club, as, as I keep saying, but I'm a big fan of their communities as well. And there are loads of people that really enjoyed this. So it's a difficult one for me to say, because if you're a fan of rye, you're probably going to like it. <laughs> that's the simple fact of the matter. But if you're struggling with rye, probably not going to like it, same as me. It's It's probably classic rye it's the same it's the same as any other rye i've ever tried it's just a bit a bit hot and heavy for me which is ironic because i love the peat and that i love that when that when that really stinks i love it but i'll keep trying that's the one thing i will say i've got a rye tasting hopefully i'm going to attend that coming up because i'm keen to see if i can find a way to break through this and find some enjoyment there but that said i've got such a choice of whiskey that if i just don't like one side of it then fair enough but I'm the kind of person that I, I won't let that lie. I won't just sit here and tell you 
Rye isn't any good. Ignore it. I will always be keen to say this is just my personal opinion and you should check out other people's opinions to see if you like a bottle or not. And that's the same for all of my videos, all of my videos. So yeah, a bit of a long one because I felt like this one needed a bit of an explanation. I don't like being negative about uh, whiskey too much because that's not what whiskey's about. Whiskey isn't about this is a crap bottle, don't ever buy it. That is not the way to review whiskey in my opinion. You know, uh, uh, what I want to do is I want I want to try and give you my personal opinion, but I also want to connect with the rye fans out there and try and give them some kind of uh, you know review on this because otherwise it's not useful. It's not useful to you. But that's just a, a little bit of a kind of insight into my process. You can see that even if I don't like whiskey, I'm able to kind of pull out a bit of a review anyway. But yeah, unfortunately, not one for me, and I don't ha I don't say that very often. Um, it won't be going in my Terrible Whiskies playlist because it isn't a Terrible Whiskey. That is really reserved for the true abominations in the whiskey world. This isn't that. I am going to try my hardest to get through this because I have to say, as a final thought, um, the only other rye that I've really not liked um, was the Storning rye, also came from Somerton. And in the end, I had to sort of sift that off in samples to people and take it to clubs and things like that to get rid of it because I just couldn't bear to drink it anymore. I haven't encountered that with this yet and it is improving it is improving as it goes down just not very quickly you know i've had this open for like two months now uh no a month and a bit a month and a bit so by the time i get to the bottle kill on this i might have changed my mind so keep an eye out for my whiskey and whiskey outs because i might have changed my mind but where i'm at right now about a third not for me but it might be for you